Very well, good. Uh, let's get here. Look, Minister, it's nice to see you. Thanks for coming in. Um, I want to raise an issue this morning which I think resonates right the way across the country, uh, and it's relation to income limits for social housing. And, Minister, I have a very simple request from you this morning. Your government needs to urgently raise the income limits for social housing. I was concerned with a response from your colleague, Dara Breen, to a PQ in November of last year. And yet your colleague stated that the current income eligibility requirements provide for a fair and equitable system of identifying those households facing the greatest challenge in meeting their accommodation needs from their own resources. And I respectfully say to you, Minister, no, they do not. I think any one of us in our local constituency duties will be able to tell you that we meet families week in, week out, who are just above the criteria and have no prospect of, of having long-term housing solutions for them. Um, I met a couple this week living in my own village who currently pay 1,400 euros rent a month. 1,400 euros, they've got three children. They are working people and they have no prospect of putting together a deposit for a house. And they are excluded from social housing because they earn in excess of 33,750 euros, which is the income limit for Limerick. I could have chosen any county, but I want to talk about Limerick because that's where I'm from. Minister, you'll know that uh, rents have, have rocketed during your last government, in which you were a member. You'll know that in Limerick, rents went up by 45% between 2016 and 2021. So that a family renting a three-bedroom house on average, these according to daft.ie, went up from 799 euros a month to 1,160. Now, we all know the impact of that huge increase, that additional cost on families. It means that not only can they not save for a deposit, it means they are literally having to go to a community welfare officer just to get by, week in, week out, month in, month out. And here's the thing, these people, as it currently stands, have no hope. They are left trapped. They are locked out of the social housing system. They are trapped with unscrupulous landlords. Let me tell you, that particular couple had their rent increased by 200 euros in December. And when they pointed out that, they, that the landlord couldn't do that, that it was illegal under the pandemic rules, he said, no problem. You know what, I'll put the house up for sale and then you'll have to find somewhere else to live. That's the reality at the hard edge of living in accommodation, rented accommodation. And the problem is the market is currently skewed entirely in favour of landlords. Indeed, I'd welcome you to comment, Minister, in relation to that increase in rent, because I have one word for it. A 45% increase in rent in five years is greed. Let's call it pure and simple, it's greed. And we need this government to respond to this issue urgently. I have some simple requests. You need to raise the limits, and you need to do that without delay. You need to ensure that uh, the working family payment, formerly known as, as FIS, is not included when calculating income. What a huge punishment. Bad enough that people are on low pay and that this government hasn't addressed the issue of low pay in this economy. But you also punish them in terms of throwing in that calculation to exclude them from qualifying for social housing. We also need to look at the adult income for adult children and households because we know what's happening. Adult children cannot move out because the cost of rents is so high. It's like a perfect storm here. And there was an expectation um, when this government was formed that there would be a review of housing, housing um, limits and it would be urgently moved up, but it hasn't happened. And instead we see it's part of a wider review and that wider review is of absolutely no use to work in families who are being thrown off the housing list because they have a small moderate increase in their income locked out of HAP, locked out of all supports. And I have to say to you, Minister, and I think you know this, there are tens of thousands of families in this predicament of having no supports. They are locked out of ever getting a mortgage and they're locked out of social housing. It's grossly unfair. I'm hoping for a positive response from you, Minister. Minister, thank you. Thank you, Cahirlach. <clears throat> and I thank the Senator for tabling this very important commencement matter. Minister O'Brien is obviously unavailable this morning, so he's asked me to take this on his behalf. Applications <clears throat> for the social housing support are assessed by the relevant local authority in accordance with the eligibility and need criteria set down in Section 20 of the Housing Miscellaneous Provision Act 2009 and the Associated Social Housing Assessment Regulations 2011 as amended. The 2011 regulations prescribe maximum net income le levels for which local authorities in different bands according to the area concerned with income being defined as assessed according to the standard household means policy. Under the household means policy, which applies in all local authorities, net income for social housing assessment is defined as gross housing income less income tax, PRSI and the universal social charge. 
The policy provides for a range of income disregards, and local authorities have also the discretion to decide and disregard any income that is temporary, short-term or one-off in nature. The income bans are expressed in terms of maximum net income thresholds for a single-person household, with an allowance of 5% for each additional adult household member, subject to a maximum allowance under the category of 10% and 2.5% for each child, subject to a maximum allowance under this category of 10%. The income bans and the authority area assigned to each band are based on assessment of income needed to provide a household's basic needs, plus comparative analysis of local rental cost of housing accommodation across the country. It is important to note that these limits introduced at a time reflect a blanket increase of €5,000 introduced prior to the new system coming into operation. In order to broaden the base from which social housing tenants are drawn, both promoting sustainable communities and also providing a degree of future proofing. Given the cost to the state providing social housing, it is considered prudent and fair to direct resources to those most in need of social housing support. The current income eligibility requirements generally achieve this, providing for a fair and equitable system of identifying those needs facing the greatest challenge in meeting their accommodation needs from their own resources. However, as part of a broader social housing review and reform agenda, a review of the income eligibility criteria for social housing supports in each local authority is currently underway. The review will not be completed until the impacts of parallel initiatives in terms of affordability have been considered, and all these will inform where the thresholds should lie. These initiatives include, for example, the €200 million Euro Local Infrastructure Housing Activation Fund and the €310 million Euro Shared Service Sites Fund. From this, some £50 million has been allocated in 2021, which will deliver more affordable homes. In addition, eligibility conditions for other key affordability initiatives, like the National Cost Rental Policy and the new Affordable Purchase Shared Equity Scheme, are both included in the forthcoming Affordable Housing, affordable housing Bill, together with the Rebuilding Ireland Home Loan and the Help to Buy Scheme. It will all be factored into this work as the supports are to ensure that they are targeted and are given to those who need. Thank you. Minister. <clears throat> Minister, thank you for your response. I have to say I'm deeply disappointed with the response. It's almost a carbon copy of a response given to my former colleague, uh, Deputy uh, Manan O'Connor, in November. Um, so here's the thing. Your response, and I say this with all due respect, will mean absolutely nothing to those working families who are currently locked out of public housing and locked out of the mortgage market. As I said to you, and I don't think you would be able to disagree with me, these are people who are struggling to provide for their children each week. There are low-income people who are excluded and locked out because of the ridiculously low thresholds. You haven't addressed the issue of the 45% increase in rents for the last five years. There is only one way to address that, which is to raise the thresholds, to include these people, to give them some hope of a better future. And I have to say, and I say this just being honest with you, this speaks of a government that hasn't changed housing policy. It speaks of a government completely out of touch with tens of thousands of working people across the country who are looking for hope, who are looking for inclusion from this government. And unfortunately, you're telling me once again this morning they're excluded. Yes, Thank you, Cahirlock, and I thank uh, the Senator for giving me the opportunity to comment on this matter. Uh, first of all, the government is providing affordable homes for people. We have an affordable bill coming through now, which will obviously give a chance, an opportunity for families to get on the property ladder. We also have our rent pressure zones, which refer directly to the issue you raised. Uh, they cover almost three quarters of all tenancies in this country now, and they limit the scope for rental increases. And the report recently has shown that in terms of the DAFT model over the last number of quarters, how rent increases have stabilised. Also in terms of lower paid workers, this government and the previous government collectively have increased by 30 per cent the minimum wage to target people and give them an opportunity to increase the money they take home. And obviously this review has to look at all those aspects. I think it's very important that we do get the review done, see where those most in need get the best possible resources and support. And through the affordable housing bill, through our rent pressure zones and obviously the key ban that's in place now to protect people through COVID, we will ensure that those in most need get the key resources. Thank you.